I don't like these attacks on the Department of Justice, the FBI, the IRS, as if they are somehow anti-U.S. agencies. Those agencies keep this democracy in check. It keeps them in float. They provide the checks and they provide the balance. Ain't nothing changed, nothing new here to see. This ain't nothing but some political maneuvering. America! Welcome to the eulogy, eat it up. It's called political buffoonery. Hello and welcome back to another episode of This Week in Democracy, a show seeking out political buffoonery and literally finding it everywhere in government. So today we're looking at a clip from the House committee hearing concerning the whistleblowers in the Hunter Biden investigation from the IRS. Those whistleblowers, as we all know, testified about their involvement in the investigation and how they believed that the DOJ and the FBI slow rolled things and gave favorable treatment to Hunter Biden and, and say that it's all politically motivated to help the big guy, to help out President Biden. And let's just say that there were a lot of fireworks at this hearing and I could have gone for the obvious clips, like the, the Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, let's call it expose of Hunter Biden and some still photos from his laptop that are probably not safe for work and definitely not safe for YouTube, especially for a young channel like mine, uh, just trying to make it in the world. Uh, or we can go to other instances of buffoonery and, and discussions that broke out, certainly some members of Congress who decided not to do questioning at all and just make statements on the record about whatever issue they wanted to talk about, mainly about Donald Trump. But I thought we would put the buffoonery into one big globule, one big combination, combine it all together, and look at this clip. It's probably not being talked about as much as it should be. Uh, this clip from Congressman uh, Kwesi Mfume from Maryland. Uh, you rem may remember him. He ran against Kimberly Klasik in, in Maryland in the Baltimore area. You may also know him as the uh, former head of the NAACP from back in the 90s. He was once a congressman before, has returned back to Congress. And to say that he had some interesting views at this hearing is an understatement, folks. You want to talk about Trump, Trump derangement syndrome? You want to talk about some out-of-control statements and some bombastic behavior? This has just about everything in it. But before we get to that clip, be sure to like, share, subscribe to the channel. We're over a thousand subscribers now and we're steaming through. Uh, we got a lot planned for this show. We hope you stick with us throughout all this and you hopefully enjoy what we have for you today, which is an examination of Congressman Mfume's buffoonery at this hearing. Let's get to the clip right now. Um, I'm glad somebody brought up the word suspicious activity because that's just what's taking place in this room. Make no mistake about it. And I want to congratulate my colleagues from across the aisle for gathering us here today, almost distracting us from the biggest investigation that is going on right now in our country and in our nation's history involving the former president and the front runner for the Republican nomination. Let's stop here for a moment. Obviously, the hyperbole is off the charts, right? So talking about this being a distraction from Donald Trump and the investigation into whatever is going on with him, whether it be in New York, in Georgia, Michigan, uh, federal investigation into the classified documents and that indictment as well. Obviously, that's not being handled by Congress, right? A lot of that is being handled by uh, prosecutors in various jurisdictions. So this isn't so much of a distraction from that as this is Congress's job to provide oversight of the executive branch kind of what they're supposed to be doing. But of course, you got to invoke the name Donald Trump and throw everything out of whack because Donald Trump lives rent-free in a lot of people's heads, including Congressman Mfume. But let's let him continue. Who is currently facing a 37-count indictment this week, and maybe two weeks from now more, and maybe two weeks from then more. But we're spending our time talking about Hunter Biden, someone who has already pleaded guilty to not filing his taxes, having a gun charge, and now I hear also uh, paying for prostitution. But let's just remember that there was a case in New York not too long ago where our former president also got into trouble regarding payments and regarding a stripper and was found guilty of a uh, violation in civil court. Okay, so for those of you out there who may be an exotic dancer, 
I want to apologize up front for Congressman Umfume's implication that stripping and prostituting are the same thing. Kind of insensitive of him to say that. Uh, also, forget about all that Hunter Biden stuff. You know, the, the, the fact that he's pleading guilty, actually admitting to crimes. Let's talk about the charges brought against President Trump. And, and, and that's what we should be focusing on here. Not to mention, you know, let, let's put aside the fact that there are investigators handling that that are outside of Congress, and it's not really your job, okay, sure, let's do it your way, and let's let Donald Trump live rent-free in your head. My goodness, absolutely ridiculous. Now, there seems to be a lot of hemming and hawing about special treatment, special treatments. When the president, just a couple of days ago, tried to delay his federal documents trial and requested the U.S. District Judge Aileen Cannon, whom he appointed to somehow or another consider the fact that he was a candidate and therefore maybe, maybe, maybe his trial should be put off until after the election. That seems to me like special treatment if I've ever heard of it before. And this is where being a lawyer helps out. For those of you who don't know, I am a practicing attorney. I do uh, civil litigation and uh, trial work and things like that. But I do know enough about criminal law to know that there are procedural motions that are made, there are requests for an adjournment that are made, and there are myriad reasons for those sorts of adjournments again. So when, what Congressman Ufume is doing right now is actually misleading you. Asking for an adjournment of a date for a specific reason, whether it be for scheduling purposes or an election, is not asking for special treatment. It's, it's requesting time to be able to, to properly prepare your litigation, to prepare for your trial, to gather your evidence, to gather witnesses. And doing that in the midst of a, of a federal election could be overly burdensome to a defendant. And asking for that is perfectly legitimate. It doesn't mean you're going to get it, but you can certainly ask for an adjournment. Prosecutors ask for adjournments all the time when they're not ready for a case. And, and nine times out of 10, they get it as well. So this isn't special treatment there. What is special treatment or what may be special treatment is when an investigator who claims that they have complete carte blanche to bring whatever charges they want to bring wherever they want to bring them, then changes their story in written letters to the committee saying that they didn't have the authority to do all that and was limited to certain jurisdictions. And, well, you probably saw the hearing. If you haven't seen the hearing, I encourage you to listen to the evidence at this House committee hearing discussing why people believe that the federal government, specifically the executive branch, which, by the way, is under the purview of President Joe Biden, may have slow walked an investigation with Hunter Biden, his son. But let's continue on. You know, Trump derangement syndrome, you know, denigrating uh, people who are exotic dancers. My God, it's just and we're not even halfway through. But I'm grateful that my colleagues on the other side of the aisle are taking at least tax evasion very seriously. And I would welcome also a hearing on the former president's history of tax evasion and how long it took to see his tax returns covering 10 years and what was the outcome of that decision. You know. So I like to think that I'm up on the news. When was President Trump even accused of tax evasion? Did Congressman Mfume just make that up? I know that there was controversy over the disclosure of his of his tax records, and President Trump claimed that he was being audited and he couldn't release his own records, and it took some litigation to release the records. But I don't believe that there was ever any claim that Donald Trump was evading taxes or or tax evasion, uh, a charge like that. I know that he certainly admitted during the debate with Hillary Clinton that he used the tax code to his advantage, which is what every American should do, take every deduction they can and, you know, use accounting tactics to be able to save as much money as they can from, from federal taxation? Why not? That's what the law is for. The law is there for people to apply and to utilize, right? But I don't think that that's exactly accurate. But once again, another example in, what is this, a couple of minutes here, two and a half minutes, of Congressman Mfume showing that President Trump not only lives rent-free in his head, probably built a condo, a golf course, a swimming pool. It's all up in there. You know, the Trump organization was hit with $1.6 million in Manhattan State Court being convicted of a tax 
scheme. So let's, let's be real when we talk about this. It's not just Hunter Biden. But as long as we're saying Hunter Biden, we forget everything else. And again, Hunter Biden did step forward and said, I did not file taxes in two years. And yes, this gun charge, I will take responsibility for. OK, so obviously he was talking about the Trump organization's taxes. And if, if, if you want to conflate the two and, and put that all on Donald Trump and, and not, his whole entire organization is is the same as him. OK, if you want to do that. But then what he does here is he praises Hunter Biden for admitting to a couple of years of tax evasion and the illegal possession of a gun, when in actuality it came out in this House committee hearing that there were other years of tax evasion where the investigation was so slow walked that the statute of limitations to bring charges on those were actually expiring and did expire, so they couldn't even bring those charges, which again, Part of the reason that these whistleblowers are here are to talk about the irregularities in the investigation that led not only to this sweetheart plea deal, but also to the mishandling of certain charges and the mishandling of the investigation itself. And Congressman Mfume's minimization of this and doing the whataboutism with Trump, completely buffoonish. And we're going to talk about that sort of buffoonery and what it actually is in a few moments. Like what you see so far? Go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. Also, leave us a comment and tell us what you're thinking. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another show. Now, um, I love the fact that we are so much in love with the IRS. In fact, Speaker McCarthy said uh, when he was elected on the 15th vote that the first bill that he would repeal funding for was the bill that would provide for 87,000 additional IRS employees. My, don't we love the IRS? We're just gonna cut their budget. In fact, there's a member of this committee who on their own website said that they are proud to have voted to strip away the plan to empower the IRS with additional funding. So I'm gonna get back to those two words again about keeping it real, and I think we really have to do that. Um, I just think, Mr. Shapley, two quick things. Um, oh, look, we're finally getting to a question. You know, we're taking pot shots at the GOP where we're conflating different issues between IRS funding for uh, tax enforcement for, and people who are going to be carrying guns out in the field uh, to enforce uh, tax crimes versus uh, these elite international tax uh, investigators that were before the committee. We're finally going to get to a question to one of them after all this conflating and all this Trump whataboutism. How about that? Did Hunter Biden in any way in your knowledge, uh, not Hunter, but did any of his children receive money? Yes or no? Okay, so just a little bit of a setup here for this question. Before this hearing started, uh, the chairman of the committee, uh, Congressman Comer, explain to the members of, of the committee that there are going to be certain questions they're going to want answers to, but because of the tax code, uh, because of a specific section of the tax code, I forget exactly which one it is. Uh, it's, I think it's section 6021 or 6018. It's one of those sections uh, that nobody really knows about it except people who are involved in uh, tax enforcement, that uh, your tax records are not to be publicly disclosed unless it goes through a certain process. and and this committee hearing is the culmination of that process, but not everything went through that process. So when Congressman Mfume is asking about these records and what they may show, they probably, they hadn't been disclosed yet. And you, you'll see that in the answer here. And, and uh, well, let's just see. Uh, I think Special Agent Ziegler would be better. To yes or no? Special Agent Ziegler would be better. Either one, yes or no? Congressman, thank you for your question. Given by the statute, I am limited in my testimony I'm, okay. I can give you, here today, but I can. we can turn over any of the records that relate to the adult children. Yes, we'd like House to see Ways those. Means we, Committee. We'd like to see those. Really, I would, since we are so concerned about tax evasion, and we've got people at the highest levels of government doing it, and we don't want to talk about that at all. Now, here's what galls me. I don't like these attacks on the Department of Justice, the FBI, the IRS, as if they are somehow anti-US agencies. Those agencies keep this democracy in check, it keeps them in float. 
They provide the checks and they provide the balances. I'm sorry, what? No, they don't. They don't provide checks and balances. They're part of the executive branch. They're agencies under the president's powers, the, the executive power. They, they don't provide checks and balances. They're not a branch of government. Are you kidding me here? Th that's just completely inaccurate. It's completely buffoonish. And my God, th this is a gentleman that was formerly the head of the NAACP, and he's sticking up for the FBI, an organization that historically illegally surveilled the NAACP. That there are so many academic records and references to the illegal surveillance of, of you know, Martin Luther King, the, the NAACP, Malcolm X. I don't need to explain that. It's, it's out there. But now we're going to be defending the FBI, especially given the perception of the FBI with the Russia investigation and, and Peter Strzok and Lisa Page and, and Jim Comey supposedly costing Hillary Clinton the, the presidency? Really? you got to be kidding me with this right now. The, the, wow. I, I, I'm, at, I'm legitimately at a loss for words. And we could be, quite frankly, using our time to better talk about crime in America that's affecting everybody. Oh, okay, here we go. This is a typical tactic of pretty much any hearing when you're in the minority. Uh, so because you don't like the subject of the hearing and the party that is controlling the agenda, you go off on a litany of items that you're going to talk about that you should be better using your time to serve instead of the nonsense that's in front of you. This is, it's, it's typical of people in power who are not in power at the time, who are not in control, whining about an agenda that doesn't suit their own narrative. And as we've seen from this whole debacle of a presentation, nothing about this hearing sits well with Congressman Mfume. He is completely, I don't want to say apoplectic, but he certainly is an incredulous buffoon. He's a hot mess right now. Type of buffoon I talk about in my book, Schnooks, Crooks, Lies, and Scoundrels, a field guide to identifying political buffoons. Available now on Amazon, at Barnes & Nobles, and other online bookstores. This is the hot mess buffoon. We've talked about this sort of buffoon before in, in other videos where we discuss the use of emotion to overcome reason. There's a lot of emotion and, and a lot of vitriol coming from Congressman Infume right now throughout this entire presentation. The, the uh, incredulous nature of going doing this work instead of going after Donald Trump. And Hunter Biden is, he, he admitted to his crimes and he shouldn't be dragged through this. And what about all your hypocrisy on the other end? And now, you know, they are the checks and balances. Are you kidding me? Even just repeating it makes me sound stupid. But... The hot mess buffoon likes to deal in emotion, driving passion, and very little reason behind it. We saw him conflating uh, investigations with uh, trial procedure, with uh, congressional hearings, and trying to equate them all to the same thing to suit his narrative. This is an emotional hijacking, folks. This is what this presentation is. Emotional hijacking, using his own emotions to inflame other people's emotions in order to cloud their reason from seeing exactly what's going on. Let's see how he ends it up here. I'm sure there's going to be a wonderful rhetorical flourish from the congressman. Attacks on women's health, the economy, budgetary issues, public education, housing, the need for senior citizens to be able to pay for prescription drugs, child poverty, and mental health, to name a few. And yet we are doing this all over again for the Hunter Biden show to someone who has pleaded guilty and has taken responsibility for not filing taxes for two years. This is ludicrous. Beam me up, Scotty. There's no intelligent life down here. None. Oh, look at that rhetorical flourish at the end. I love it. Oh, man. Nancy Pelosi wept. She's the one that tears the papers, not you. <laughs> oh, man. See, you see what I'm talking about? About these types of buffoons with, with the emotional hijack? They're a hot mess. They absolutely lose control. They want you to lose control. And, and forget the fact 
that you have two extremely credible whistleblowers who are coming before Congress with nothing to gain and everything to professionally lose to discuss why they believe that the proper procedures weren't followed in investigating the current president's son. That is what we have whistleblower protection for. So we can get to the bottom of these types of investigations that are being abused by the powerful in favor of the powerful. And I think it's a teachable moment for everyone. Emotion has its place in policymaking. It's good to have impassioned stances, but when you let passion overcome your sense of reason, or when you let emotion cover for the fact that your narrative is under attack, you're the one that ends up like a buffoon. So you want to be beamed up, Congressman? Absolutely. Get beamed up. There is no intelligent life in the presence of a presentation like that. All views and opinions expressed here are not necessarily of the mainstream media and may offend some listeners. It's called political buffoonery.